Hey, welcome back to ZK Master Tech. It's a beautiful day here at Sloan's in Atwood, Illinois. Um, it's a busy morning. We got a lot going on. Um, I got some major projects coming. Um, I brought the combine and they had the hydro pump um, go out in the field that we hauled in. Um, so I've got it in the shop and I'm getting ready to do repairs on it and I'm going to film that whole process, but it's going to take a while to get that done. Um, so whenever I have a big project and I usually bring in something else smaller to work on in between if I'm waiting on parts or whatever. So that's what this guy is here. Um, this is a 9530T. Um, customer brought it in mainly for a steering complaint. Um, he said that when you turn the steering wheel to the left, it wouldn't go as far and then there was a catch in the steering wheel. And then if you moved it past that catch, it was really hard to turn. And the same thing when you went to the right direction. And I confirmed it, it's bad. So um, I think the steering input device on the bottom of the cab is what's causing that catch and that restriction. Um, so I did get a part order for it, but it's coming from Canada. So it's going to be a minute before it gets here. Um, while it was in, I went ahead and looked over the rest of the tractor um, to see if there was any here I am to dot fix me's. Um, and I noticed the fan drive was puking oil like Niagara Falls. So we're going to address that. And um, the rocker cover is also leaking pretty bad. Um, so we're going to put a new gasket on the rocker cover. And I'm going to bring you guys in for the journey. Might as well. Um, we're going to fully update the fan drive on this. So we're going to put the latest and greatest parts on here where the customer can um, be able to grease it himself easily. And the, assemb the new assemblies are also balanced a lot better. So it actually runs a lot smoother um, with this setup. And I told the customer if this was my tractor um, and I was going to keep it for a while, I would definitely put this new fan drive system on because I believe it really does make a difference. So let's check it out. All right, so here's the steering wheel on this beast. And here, let's shut the door here. Now when you turn it, feel that? And then it hits the stop. And if I go the other way, there's center. And when I go past center, it's pretty hard to turn. And it makes noises it's not supposed to make. So I took this column apart and I checked the, the U-joint and the shaft and everything in the steering column and it all looks good. So this actually has a steering shaft that goes down through the floor into a steering um, input controller. So there's a electronic device that goes on the bottom of the steering column and it has position sensors in there in order to tell um, the steering system you know, which direction we want to turn basically. And we'll get into more of that later and how that works and all the magic that's inside of that little box. But the main problem is this. I mean, this thing should spin super easy. It should spin like this, but it doesn't. So I got the part ordered for it. So in the meantime, we're going to tackle this um, fan drive and get that thing updated. All right, so here on this 9530T, we have a 13.5 liter tier three engine, um, just like the one I did the oil pan on. Um, but the fan drive on this, now it's similar to the 8R I just did a fan drive on, but it's different. I mean, it works the same, but the way it works is differently. Because down here, here's your drive. So this is basically like a hydraulic cylinder. We have a line coming in with hydraulic pressure and that line also goes to a fan control valve. And so the ECU is controlling the solenoids on that fan drive, being, bringing hydraulic pressure in. And then this will squeeze this belt, which will then cause it this part of the, this is the driven shift. So it'll pull this belt in, making this a smaller pulley, causing this giant fan to move faster. Now you can see the oil build up on this thing. I mean, it's got the ick and it's really bad down here. So if you get oil slinging anywhere in this system, it's because it's leaking down here. 
Now you got two places this can leak. It can either leak out here or in here, and that's because the seals inside in that cylinder are bad and leaking, or it can be because of this hydraulic hose or the rotary union that's inside of this drive. And I will show you that, um, but we got updated parts, so we're gonna be putting a new drive in. We're gonna be putting a new driven, a new hub, and then a new rotary union kit. And we're gonna get this thing fully updated to where you can actually grease this guy. Because if you have this style shiv and you've got these black springs back here, this is the old style drive. So if you have a shaft failure inside of here or um, the bearings waller out in this timing cover, you have to update it with the new parts because you just can't get this stuff anymore. Um, so there's a kit where you get this driven, you get a new shaft, which is designed to go into a timing cover that is worn out from the old bearings. So if you got an old shaft and the bearings wallered out this timing cover, this new shaft will press in there super tight. And so you don't have to replace this cover. And then you're gonna get, you know, two new shivs here, but they're gonna have um, grease circs on them where you can grease this um, outside of the machine. Cause the way this one's set up, you actually have to take this all apart and you have to hand pack the grease inside of this thing, which a lot of the times it gets neglected and doesn't get done. So um, these things will get powder dry and then these shivs will bind and you'll have low fan speed codes, stuff like that. So um, I did notice this thing was leaking. So I know, you know, we needed to at least address the leak, but I talked it over to the customer and gave him his options and he wanted to go ahead and just update the whole thing. So that's why we're doing that. And let's get into the repair. Okay, so we got the gear wrench cart pulled up here. And I like this cart because I can put like 80% of the tools I need in this to work in the shop. And I don't have to get a whole bunch of tools out of my truck and go back and forth. And then I'll get another service call. And then I'll have to pack said tools back up in the truck before I can leave. So I just got another tool cart and I just loaded this thing up with most of the tools I need to get, you know, 80% of the jobs done. I might have to get, you know, a big pry bar or, or, you know, some random things out of the truck, but nothing compared to just working out of my truck completely. So I like to have, you know, a set aside standalone set of tools that I can just leave in the shop. So I will definitely have enough tools in this box to get all this job done. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is unbolt this fan, which there's 13 millimeter bolts around this hub that we're gonna take out using, you know, a 13 millimeter gear wrench is what I use. Um, this is actually a blue point wrench that has a padded handle, um, selectable direction, and it can flex the head, it's indexing. I'm gonna really like these because it's got the padded handle and it's really girthy right here and you can get in there and it's not hard on your fingers, so. We're going to get in here and get these bolts loose and they're not very tight. So I just break it loose and then I just pull it the rest of the way out with my fingers. And I don't like to use electric ratchets in there because you can back a bolt out and then that electric ratchet can go into the cooler and poke a hole in it and cause a leak and we don't want to do that. So we'll just be safe and use a wrench. Speaking from experience. Can you guys know of any good podcasts that I should listen to that's, you know, mechanic related? I know a good one that you guys should check out and it's called The Certified Wrench. And it's a, it's mainly about field techs. Um, the guy that does the channel, he is a field tech. And he just kind of talks about the life of a, a field tech. And I thought it was awesome. It's really great. We just got started. I think there's only two episodes out right now. But um, you guys should definitely check it out. And I'll leave a link in the description that'll take you to that podcast. And again, like I said, it's called Certified Wrench. You guys should check it out. Now I got all the bolts out. Push this fan off this hub like this. Now we're going to take all the bolts 
off this hub right here. Right. I like using this snap-on 13 millimeter ratchet wrench because it has a slim profile head and you can get this in a lot tighter spaces than you can in normal gear wrench. So I know snap-on, you don't, everybody says you don't need snap-on tools to do your job, but sometimes it makes your life better. Got all the bolts out but one. Okay, get the hub out of the way. Now that the hub's out of the way, now we can pull our fan out. Right now we got uh, 315s right here, and I like to use a wrench here, and you put them on this these tabs that are on here, and you can hold it because when you're trying to break it loose, this whole thing wants to spin. So that'll allow you to hold it steady while you break these loose, and they're usually pretty tight. Let's get them broke loose. And this is a 90 degree Milwaukee Impact. Just zip them out. And we'll just remove this shiv. All right, so here's the red reunion here where that hose is going into. So we need to use one wrench to hold the red reunion and another wrench to take the line off. I use a 16 and a 17 millimeter wrench. I get it on the, the rotary union first. And then we get it on here, on the line. Then we break it loose. Maybe help. Just slipped off the rotary union. All right, try this again. There we go. Break that line loose. Take it off. Now, once this hose is off, now we can slip our, our belt off. All right, now you can see what I was seeing, this leak right here. So now we're gonna get this serpentine belt off because it goes around this fan drive here and we got a spring-loaded tensioner up here that we're gonna stick a half-inch drive ratchet in and pull it down and yank this belt off. Set it over there for now. All right, now we're gonna take this lower drive off and we've got six bolts that are holding it to the crank. Just get them broke loose first. All right, just zippy zip zip. Okay, and we'll pull it out. Now these bolts are pretty long. They've got these rubber seals on there and it kind of helps center that bolt in the bore when you're going in as well. I yank all these bolts out. This thing ain't gonna fall off, trust me.
Now, I swear I recorded removing that fan drive, but I must not have hit the record button. I apologize about that, guys, but I just simply used a pry bar to just pry that out. slide this guy off. Uh-oh. She's stuck. There she blows. Slide this guy off the shaft. All right, so here's our spline shaft for our driven shiv. And you can see those bushings have eight into the shaft right here. There's quite a big lip right here. That's why it was hard to pop that thing off. And then you can also see the splines are wore pretty good. I don't know if you can see it on camera or not, but you can tell where it's wearing in there, wearing here, but mainly right here. This area is not good. And then you can, cause there's two bearings that go on the shaft. The shaft goes, slips into this timing cover and then there's a snap ring that holds it in. And there's a little bit of movement there, but the bearings, they don't sound so hot. So if this old style shaft gets damaged, you have to update it to the new style. So. We already know that you know this was a good idea to go ahead and do this because this wasn't going to last too much longer i've already looked inside the shiv and it's powder dry so it's a good thing we went ahead and got into here all right so here we have our driven assembly here and even though we're not reconditioning these i'm going to show you guys how to take them apart and kind of show you what i found inside of this thing so these bolts is what hold your spring assembly on, 8 millimeter Allen. And there's your spring assembly. Get out of here. All right, so this is what happens to these things. See in here right next to the splines? Well, that's your grease cavity. And you can see how it just gets powder dry. See, there's no more lubrication in there. So that's why these bushings start to wear and it starts eating into that shaft and it starts eating into these splines real bad. And then this shaft can't slide back and forth. Well, the shift can't slide back and forth on the shaft, I should say. And then it causes binding, causing fan speed codes. And you might think that this looks okay because there's no leaks or anything like that looking from the outside. But like I said, this style, you have to hand pack these. So if you don't take it apart, you have no idea what it looks like. So usually once I get these apart, after they've had, you know, thousands of hours on them and never been touched, they look like this. And it can get way worse than this. We actually caught this one fairly soon, um, but you can tell just how dry and powdery you can get inside there. So on these, just like the 8R fan drive, we have a bushing right here and seals right here. And these actually have a snap ring holding these seals in it's hard to see under this dirt but you would just peel the snap ring out pick your o-rings out pick your bushing out put new bushing in put new seals in put the snap ring back on same on the other side and then you would hand pack the grease inside here and then if your shaft was okay you just slide this back on you're ready to go for a while but I'll, when we get the new parts out I'm going to show you why I like updating the shiv to the new style. So here we have the lower drive unit. Take it apart, flip it upside down. This is the end that goes into the crankshaft. 
So we're gonna remove these two five millimeter Allens right here. And this just pulls right off. Just like that. Leaves us with our hydraulic cylinder here. Now these seals out here, this is what seals dirt from getting inside here. And then we have oil seals. So we got two dirt seals, two lip seals for the oil. And then we got some bushings inside there too. So you just take your hands like this and just pull it off. So this is our shaft here. And this little, this little cover right here, you can, it's just clipped onto here. And here's our rotary union, so it actually does not feel too healthy. It's a little rough. But this allows this to spin and maintain a hydraulic connection right here. Rotary union, that's what that's called. So here we look at our shaft and you can see these grooves right here and you can feel them. If you can feel them with your finger, then this needs to be replaced because those seals will rub on this groove and eventually wear them out, causing it to leak. So it rubs here and then it rubs here. But most of the time I see the wear to where this shaft needs replaced is right here, but you can easily feel that with your finger. So, even if we could recondition this and put new seals in this drive and it probably wouldn't last very long i mean it'd probably run and not leak for a little bit but eventually this is going to start leaking again and then you're going to have to do this all over again so in here see we've got our our dirt seal here this black seal right here, this is our oil seal, and then here's our bushing inside here, and then you've got splines right here. And you got the same thing on the other side. It's just bigger. You got a dirt seal, oil seal, bushing right here. But if you wanted to recondition this, you would just replace the seals and the bushings and you know, slap that all back together. So that's how you take it apart. It goes back together pretty easily. But we're going to go ahead and get new parts for this thing. And I'm going to show you the updated stuff. Hey, look, we got new parts. And look, they're green. Nice and shiny. So here we got the, the drive. We got a new hub. We got a new outer shift for the driven. And our new inner shift for the driven. And then we have a new shaft that are driven that goes into the timing cover. So, you know, this style um, bearing here is to fix going into a worn out timing cover. So this tractor is actually a 2011. All right. So this thing is 11 years old. Um, it's got 3,300 hours on it and basically fan drive on this thing hasn't been touched so it ran a long time with very little maintenance so the name of the game of these new updated parts is to have better balance and to have serviceability so on every single part it has been remanufactured to be balanced see these little drill holes even this new hub is balanced see here's the old one it doesn't have any of that I mean even the plate that the springs mount to is balanced you can see here here's the difference in this drive shift so you got this thicker lip around here and these little holes here look at our old one you know it's thin nothing there for balance so if we can balance this fan drive better so it spins with less vibration then we might have less problems here like where the seals and bushings eventually wear into the shaft I mean, you wouldn't think that rubber and plastic would be able to rub and eat into hardened steel, but it does, and it can. You can see it right here. So 
the name of the game is to get these things balanced to where they run smoother so we don't wear out bushings and seals. And then we're also gaining serviceability. Look what we got right here. We got a greaser. So now we can grease the shiv without having to take it apart. So annually for 500 hours, we're gonna grease this shiv here. And then on our new shaft, we have a pop off relief valve here. So the grease is gonna come out of the end of the shaft. So every time, you know, we change the oil or once a year, whatever works best for your operation. Now we can grease this upper shiv and with this updated fan drive here, we're able to run smoother. So hopefully these seals last longer. And I tell you what, I've put these on, it does make a difference. You actually feel a difference in the engine. It does run smoother. So I am a firm believer in this. I think it does work a lot better. And then this kit, of course we get a new little washer here. We get a new timing cover gasket because we're going to take the timing cover um, the outer cover off which is not a big deal so we can press that shaft in and we also have a new rotary union kit so this is an improved rotary union and it comes with a vent hose and a new uh, steel braided line and we'll get more into that later um, but this setup right here I think it costs about $2,700 and some change um, but eventually, if you're going to keep the tractor long term, this is going to pay for itself. Because, you know, if you have to rebuild this once or twice and maybe rebuild this once or twice, you know, eventually this is all going to pay for itself. So if you're going to keep the tractor long term, it's a good idea to just go ahead and update this stuff. Um, but if you got a problem in the driven, you can't get parts for this old stuff anymore, especially if the shaft's damaged. So they're just subbing these parts to the new style um, so uh, you can still get the old parts um, to recondition this lower drive you can get bushings and seals for this and put that back together but in this customer situation you know it was a good idea to go ahead and upgrade to this new system so he can run a long time and not have to worry about it and he can properly maintain um, the driven shiv without having to take it apart. So I think it's well worth the money. And another note that I have, you know, one thing I think is cool that Deere does is they update parts for tractors that are not new anymore. I mean, this tractor is 11 years old and they are still improving on parts. Now, a lot of guys say, well, they should have just had this to begin with. They should have done this to start with. And then I get a lot of comments on how um, the engineering design is flawed. Well. I'm not an engineer. I have no control over design. You know, my mission is to do the very best job for my customers that I possibly can. So the only thing I have control over is to either fix what they have, what's on there, and then how I can improve for what they have. So I can, you know, show them how to fix it or I can show them how to improve it. These are the only options that I have available to me. So, you know, that's why I'm doing this video is to show what I can do, what I have control over. I don't have any input on design. You know, I can't control that. All I can do is fix it. Okay, now we have to deal with this shaft here. And it goes into this timing cover. So, um, if we're in the heat of battle and this is, you know, middle, fall, spring, whatever, you know, I can replace this shaft in the field. You know, I slip a piece of pipe over here and then I have a plate out on the end and then I run the three bolts that the driven outer shift uses and then I just run them in there and it actually works as a puller and it will pull this shaft and bearings out of this cover and then you can put the new style in there but you ain't got a whole lot of room to be swinging a hammer in here and I... I told you it goes in hard um, but what I use to put them in is a air hammer so I'll get that shaft in there I'll clean that hole real good the best I can and then I'll take an air hammer and I'll just work the the outer race to try to drive this thing in but we're not in the heat of battle right now so we're gonna do this right and we're gonna take this cover off here so we can pull the shaft out and then we can put this in a press to where we can press this in nice and easy you know we might as well but in order to get this cover off um, you know we got 
some things that are attached that's got to come off, um, like this coolant bracket here and a clamp. Um, the AC compressor is bolted on there and the shield above it, um, but we can sneak some bolts out and just kind of push it out of the way. Um, we'll remove the alternator. You know, this, this is not a big deal. You know, this is probably, you know, 30 minutes of work. We can have this thing out and get it on a bench and onto a press and we can do this job right. So um, let's cue some music in a time lapse maybe? Sure. All right, now we got the timing cover removed, and that literally took me like 10 minutes. You know, you just gotta get this bracket loosened up here to where you can flex this to get the cover and this bolt out right here. And then just taking all the bolts off and then taking the two uh, compressor bolts out that are mounted to this little cast piece that also bolts into the, um, the timing cover there and removing the alternator and the shields off that side. But it's not that big of a deal to get that off there and. Now we can work on the bench and press that shaft in correctly. All right, now we're gonna take the big snap ring out of here. If I can find it through all the dirt. Where are you at? These holes are just covered in dirt here. time for lubrication. Now, just take a six inch pipe, place it over that. Got a plate. It's the same bolt pattern as the shaft. Try to get these bolts started. Now we just start tightening these bolts.
got that shaft out and it came out pretty hard so you can see this is our old shaft here new shaft here so as you can tell that this isn't going to seat in the same spot as this so this is the secret why this will go into a one cover because there's more than one groove in here so instead of seating clear back down in here we're going to seat right here and right here because this has never had anything sitting in it before so if this was worn out we got another groove right here where we can put this new shaft in there so that's why you can put this into a worn timing cover because you got an extra um, race i should say in this hole that you can put that shaft in Okay, so we gave this timing cover a bath and then we pressed this shaft in now we're going to install the snap ring that was supplied Okay, now we're going to replace this seal here. So the seal has a double notch on it. And it goes right here. So you get your double notch lined up. And there's another notch up here. You just start working it in. All right, now we're gonna slap that timing cover back on and we got the famous Justin Sapp gonna help us put this in. You're gonna have to grab it. All right, let's get it. Oh, well, we gotta kinda of tuck it in under this. Now look it up. Oh, you gotta pry it. It needs to go out that way. There you go. Slide it on. I think that bolt's too short. You leave that in, grab a longer one. That one's way too long. Okay. One in between that. I can't give him too much crap. I took the bolts out. He didn't. Okay. Try that one. Yeah, that's more like it. All right, now it'll hold itself. Okay, so now we got all the bolts snug. Now we're gonna torque it to 50 foot pounds. We're gonna start at the bottom and crisscross all our way up to the top. All right, now we got this torqued to 50 foot-pounds, and now we're going to put all the accessories back on. Boom, my snap's working good. Now we're gonna install the new style rotary union. So you put this spring in the hole first. Then I took some grease and lubed up my O-rings a little bit. Push that in. Now we're gonna put an O-ring in. So it's on the top. And here's the tricky part. You got these little plastic half moon pieces and they gotta go together like that. You gotta tuck them in underneath this guy. You gotta get them 
interlace just right. Like that. Sometimes you gotta pull up on that rotary engine just a little bit. And try to seat it down like that. Okay. So now we gotta put the snap ring in in this hole. And we're gonna squeeze it and we're gonna try to we're gonna push down and then let go at the same time. Now we got that rotary union ready to go and the vent line's gonna go in this hole and then our hydraulic line is going to go in this hole. But now this is ready to go into the tractor. Now we're going to install the new fan drive. Then we're just going to wiggle it in until it fully seats. Like that. Stick our new bolts in. Now, I'm going to turn it and put pressure on this bolt until I feel it click in a hole, just like that. I'll start it by fingers. So I'm going to start these a little more with the ratchet just to make sure I've got good thread engagement. because you don't want to screw up the threads in the crank. That's a bad day. Now we're going to torque them to 96 foot-pounds. torqued. So I pre-greased the shift, filled the grease cavity. I'm going to slide this guy on. Gently. I'm going to show you a secret. Thread this plate in that you use to pull the shaft with. Get it in the holes. There we go. Because it's really hard to shove this um, new shiv and these new seals onto this shaft and you ain't got a whole lot of room in here to work. This will allow you to hold the shaft, kind of turn this, because we got to get the spline to line. 
but this will also give you a place to pry. Like that. All right, now we're, I think we're up against the splines a little bit. Turn it, I feel it kind of catch. whack the camera in the process yeah there you go that's the secret to getting that guy on easily all right now at this point in time you don't want to forget you want to slip this belt in here because once you get this all on and your your new hose reconnected you can't slip this in here and you will be cussing yourself if you forget this just at least you know slip it in here just like that so you can do it later but now we can go ahead and finish the rest of this now we're gonna spread this lower shiv all the way open all right now we can get our fan belt in there here's another secret of the trade take a small two by four wedge it in right there and that'll hold that belt where it needs to be so you can get this outer shiv on easier all right now we're going to put the the outer shiv on i get these bolts lined up is the trick here It's kind of tricky to get these bolts started. There's two. This one doesn't want to start. Secret is trying to get that that shiv straight and fully seated on the shaft because if it's crooked at all it won't go in the hole and thread there she goes we're just going to run them down a little bit now take our board out bottom here and we're going to grab onto one of these tabs here just rotate it a little bit help try to center that belt As you keep hammering them down, it'll it'll kind of put this shiv in a bind because you're just you're squeezing that belt. torque bows 96 as well get that held on there
All right, now we're gonna change this hydraulic line for the steel braided line. So we're just gonna break it right here, install that new braided line, and then attach it to the rotor union. So now we're gonna hook up the new style line using this banjo fitting. We'll slip a seal over it, then you stick it through the line, and then you put another seal on it, and then you're gonna thread that into the big hole of the rotary union. Okay, now we're gonna put this vent line on. And we got a similar style bolt, but we got little plastic seals on it. Now, you notice this bolt is tiny and it's also hollow, and it doesn't take a lot of torque for you to just snap this thing off. Um, if you look at this thing wrong or breathe on it, it will break. Um, I've had trouble with these actually coming loose and coming out. Um, if you lose this bolt, it's going to cost you $102 because the only way to get it is to get a whole new uh, Row Reunion seal kit and that seal kit costs $102. I know it's ridiculous, so we're going to do this right. So we're going to stick the bolt through the fitting, put the other seal on. And then before we put this on, I'm gonna put a little bit of low strength Loctite on these threads, just a little bit. And then when you, and this is a 5 16ths here, when you thread this in and you tighten it with a wrench, you're gonna tighten it until you can't swivel this anymore and then stop. Because if you go anymore, it'll just snap this bolt off like it's nothing. So I just thread it in there and get it tight enough to where this isn't gonna swivel anymore, and then I call it a day. All right, so when you get done, it's gonna look just like this. And then you're gonna zip tie that um, vent line to follow the oil supply line. All the way down to there. And that's how you set that up. So now we can toss our fan in. We'll bolt our, our hub on to the fan driven outer shiv and then we'll bolt the fan onto here and then we'll be done. And I almost forgot, we're gonna go ahead and grease the shiv before we put this hub on because I wanna get grease coming out of this hole to make sure we're fully greased on this thing before we put the hub on because once you put the hub on then you can't see it anymore. She is. We'll let her purge out a little bit. I'll wipe that off and then we can put the hub on. All right, so this is the grease that I'm putting in here. And this is the extreme duty synthetic grease. And this is the only thing you want to put in your fan drive. And the, ser the factory recommended service interval on this is every 250 hours. Um, you can do it at 100 hours, but a maximum at 500 hours so if you want to grease this every 100 you can the recommend is 250 the maximum is 500 and use this all right so the fan is on and i'm going to go ahead and run this i'm going to go up in the cab and i'm actually going to change an ecu address to command this to full speed um, should hit about 1800 rpm at wide open throttle and hopefully it doesn't blow my camera over
so that thing the speed range went from 450 at idle and then I commanded it to full speed and then I went up to full throttle and at wide open throttle that fan is turning 1904 rpm now that's moving some air now and you as you could see you could probably see this cylinder this lower fan drive squeezing in and then that belt going inside of that driven making that fan go faster and I noticed a big difference it does actually run smoother because I ran the engine before and after and now it feels like the engine's actually smoother you know it makes a big difference when all these cast components are balanced all right that's going to do it on today's video please like and subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any updates that i have and uh, we're just got to put the shields on this tractor and then we're done with the fan drive portion of this machine um, when i get some more parts in for the rocker cover gasket and the steering input controller um, i'll do another video so you guys want to stick around for that but right now i need to get back on this combine and start these hydro repairs it's going to take a while so just be patient with me i will get that video out i just got to get this combine moving again and then you'll see the video but thanks for watching guys until next time keep that green iron moving